Dutch represent all my island people say We people celebrating all it from my homeland Like my old man say there's nothing impossible So we have to bring this message to my brother Lyrical Straight from the crew out to the blue We represent the Previously on Delos it's so cool, I'm just sitting here on the bench and it's one eating right there. <laughs> we end up on the magical Ila Anchieta. Have our Brazilian buddy Arturo visit us for the weekend? There was a, a big prisoner's revolt and this was actually the, the guardhouse. Explore an old prison and go on a pretty ridiculous night mission onto the island. So what do you think it would be like cruising around a remote Brazilian island for a week? I suppose it would be a bit different for everyone, but we're going to share with you our highs and lows of what an average week on Delos could be like. It's definitely not always sunshine and laughter, and living on a boat takes heaps of hard work and a steady mind when things go away in the middle of the night. But first, let's start with the sunshine. We're gonna head over to the south side where we chilled on the beach the other day. It looked like in a really nice spot. Yeah, so it's just, uh, you can see it in the lights, but you just have to go around here and to here. Praia de Sul. Nice. So we'll be there in like an hour. Exciting! Or less. Conditions are perfect, huh, bro? Epic. So beautiful. Smooth water over here. And uh, there's a couple of small boats. But it doesn't look like there's anybody over here. It's crazy. Winter in Brazil. <laughs> Recon mission! That was a very short commute to our next anchorage. <laughs> 20 minutes? Check it out, man. This is the same beach we hiked to the other day. So we're gonna do a little recon mission to be safe in Maggie. So we'll go check out the area and find out where to drop. Right. Recon mission, come on! Right here. Seven meters. So we're gonna drop the anchor here, we're gonna back up, Brady's gonna set the anchor here, and then we're gonna kind of come together and Delos is gonna sit around here. Pull it up, it slides out. Okay, let go. Got it? Yep. Okay. Okay, drop it. Everyone ready? How does it look, right? Pretty good. Pretty good. As long as our bow is into the swell. Look at this guy. What's up? Whoa. Uh oh. Uh oh. <laughs> he <adapted> very quickly. <laughs> what do you see, Brady? Ah! <laughs> Smokers! <laughs> They're coming for you. I wish I had gills like Kevin Costner. Right? <laughs> This feels absolutely amazing, <laughs> like, I don't know, we haven't had this kind of cruising for really this whole season, like I thought about the last time where I was in a bikini and not being cold and looking at a white sand beach and just being able to jump into the water, I mean it was really Madagascar last time and it feels super special even though the this season has been uh, crazy and unique in the way that we've been to like you know remote islands in the middle of nowhere and stuff like that it still hasn't been the you know island hopping kind of 
kind of cruising so I'm super stoked that it's you know this part of this season has started it's like the 50th time I've had to get <laughs> shit out of here I need my hacksaw uh, that's we, got a, we got a project what's the plan we are going to find a better way to fill our floaties because we have a floaty party and filling them up with the pump is like sucking not the most efficient way so we have scuba tanks we have a lot of old scuba gear like this aqualung rag that is trashed we haven't used in a long time we got a primary well, got stage here so i think we're going to cut it right there and i think this will fit inside the tube and then we'll just use the scuba tank <laughs> at least that's the plan okay so it's like your third day hanging out with delos yeah, every day. We've already put you hard to work. Yeah, it's so good. I can work doing this all day <laughs> <laughs> since I'm here. <laughs> it's a pretty good work view, huh? Yeah. I have no complaints. <laughs> <laughs> How's that working? Pretty good. I can avoid sawing my hand and my knee at the same time. It's only a hacksaw, though. It doesn't really cut the metal better than it does skin. I've learned. Ooh. Lisa is cooking up a feast. Okay, we're having dates in, in bacon, hummus, and roti. Wow, nice one, Bri. He could have told me before. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's probably good, huh? Yeah. Alright, let's do another one. Yee Whoa. Look at this lunch! <laughs> Yummy. Ooh, how's it? Jolly, jolly, jolly. <laughs> it's not too shabby, eh? Okay. Do you want a floaty? No. No? I'm good. Okay. When it landed, everybody saw that the troops had been called. Down, down, deeper and down. Her reputation. Began to drown, and as the rumor grew, so did her vow that she would let this down. After an incredibly chill and funny weekend with Arturo, it was time to say goodbye for now. We weren't sure at the time if we would see him again or not, but it always seems easier to say see you soon than goodbye for good. So much, uh, well, it's nice to meet you too. I'll see you around before you guys leave Brazil for sure. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Bye, Kaza. Thanks so much. Huh? Thanks awesome. for everything. It was awesome for we'll me too. See you soon. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Man, look at that. Yeah. That's a pretty nice hat, bro. Let's see it. Yeah, let me see it. <laughs> Fuck yeah. Yeah, I feel prettier now. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, man. Yeah. Thank you for Thank everything, you so man. Much, Good to man. see you. Thank you, man. We'll Thanks. see you soon, huh? Have a safe pleasure. ride back. All right, yeah. <laughs> you got I, your bag. I felt like I came with a lot of stuff. But <laughs> <laughs> it was plastic bags of Years. food, but we, we ate it all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those are yeah. gone. They're all, you're taking them back. They're just empty. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's why I'm... <laughs> you got to pay some dues. You know? <laughs> <laughs> the Delos tax. Yeah. 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 <laughs> You come with all your shit and we eat it and drink it all. And yeah, and take, take it. it. <laughs> and or smoke it. You leave with a hat and memories. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Brady! God, Brady, get your shit together. Maybe you just stay a little bit long. Yeah, it's a sign. Let's stay there. <laughs> <laughs> Rub it up real good, brother. There you go. Hey, do you have enough fuel? Yeah. <laughs> All right. And they're off. Yeah, yeah. Ride into the sunset. What a lovely day. So today is Sunday. And it's now one week since Liz has left the boat. She arrived in Paris safe and sound. Unfortunately, she lost her luggage, um, but in, they might find it at some point, hopefully. So <laughs> he was at the airport with a bunch of his friends and she got roses. So she's really, really, really happy in Paris. 
and Edward is taking care of her and it's really nice and they're making plans um, moving to Marseille already. It's always bittersweet, you know, like Liz left and and it kind of give, you know, you've lived so close to somebody for such a long time. I mean, she was on the boat for, well, I don't even know, like five months? To see her go was like, I don't know, super sad. But at the same time, I'm so happy for her. What also changed is, of course, we now have got way more room and way more space here on the boat because nobody's living in the salon. But on the other hand, for example, right now it's, I think it's half past 11 or something in the night and both uh, couples are already in bed. So I'm the only person up and I'm in the salon on my own working and I know if Liz would be here we, she would work as well and, or we would be cuddled up here and watching a movie. So actually I have lost my partner on the boat. I've lost my partner in crime. But on the other hand, I know it's not sad because it's, because Liz is happy and because Liz is going her own way now. Um, and that's good. That's really, really good. If you put something out to the universe, it will get answered if you put out the right vibes. And, and she did. And she did it like hardcore. <laughs> and she's still gonna be part of the Dallas family, of course. Like, she's still gonna be working with us and we still have projects going and stuff. So, I'm really happy for the future and I'm really excited for the future. And I'm happy that she's part of the Dallas family now, even though she's gone somewhere else for another adventure. <laughs> That's life, huh? Wow, girls, what are you doing? Cleaning these cushions. They're nasty. My foot hot. Wow, gross, huh? Dead um. skin, sunscreen, and food. And salt water. And salt water. Oh, What's the last time you cleaned them, Kaza? I cleaned them last time in Cape Town when we first arrived. Mm. It's been a good so a solid really half a year, a year or um, nearly a year. Yeah. Even down here. on the back. We haven't done it in a while, so... <laughs> We're slackers. For this season, Namibia. <laughs> Next! Next! Saint Helena! So how do you make these, Kaza? So I print the flags on uh, photo paper, mm -hmm. and then we put like a protective uh, film on top, like a see-through. You just print them on the inkjet printer? Yeah. Cool. Ascension! Essential. And last but not least, the grand finale. Muito Brasil. Muito Brasil. Brasil. Got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. Boom. Bam. Nice job, Casatron. Star. Done. What's the plan, Brion? Oof. We've neglected the bottom since when Saint Helena Island. And it's gotten so, so, so disgusting. It's really bad. It's the worst I've ever seen it. <laughs> what? Yeah. Really? Yeah, because we haven't painted the bottom in like two years. So the growth, all of the paint has worn away over the past two years. So it's just growth on the bottom of the hole. Oh, shame. It's so bad. It's actually living creatures. Like, you know, like, yeah. shook, shook, like we're crazy losing, things. Uh, we're losing like two knots of boat speed. Bad under there. It's tight. I got on my tools. <laughs> okay, let me try and show you what's under here. Yeah, show me. I mean, it looks totally different out of the water because it's all splayed out, but 
just growth like that. <laughs> you get leg workout, you get fucking core workout, arm workout. It's crazy. <laughs> Look at all the shrimp on me. I don't know what they are though. They're weird. I think there's shrimp, but then there's these other weird. I was literally right covered. Here. Now I've gotten a lot of them off, but. Wait. There's a good cluster. Here's a good cluster. Oh! Where's one of those oh, crazy ones? Oh, that was weird. Fun. Somebody will tell us what they are. Ooh, Alex. Yeah. Where are you? Oh, look at the sunset. Uh. <laughs> look at the sunset. Look at the moon right above you. What? The moon? Yeah. Oh, wow. Straight up. Look at the sun over there. Okay. Wow. It's a nice one. These islands are unreal. Yeah, I know. It's actually so pretty that I can't even process it. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, it's some good proboscis clouds. <laughs> no, what do you call them? Crepuscular. Crepuscular rays. Some well. good promiscuous clouds over there. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yo, that's nice. It is a spectacular sunny and hot day, and me and the Kazatron are gonna go, go paddleboarding. We've been on a fast paced and constant move since leaving South Africa six months ago. It might not seem like it from the outside, but a struggle with style of life can be finding balance. Balance between working, relaxing, exercise, and exploring. When you wake up in a different place each day, it takes a lot of energy to readjust and get focused on what needs to get done. So it felt amazing to be in this beautiful spot for a while and had the chance to get into a bit of a routine. Spending a few hours in the morning on the computers and then taking the afternoons to explore, work out, and soak up the beauty of Brazil. We've decided to go on a sunset time-lapse mission up to the viewpoint we saw on the first day we were hiking over here. And I thought I'd be real cool and like roll up my pants and jump off the back of the dinghy so that I could keep my pants dry. I ended up slipping and falling in. Now everything's wet, <laughs> including my shoes. <laughs> a good fall, bro. Yeah, one of my finest. <laughs> Think we're gonna make it? Uh, if we hustle, yeah, it's gonna be tight. Well, we made it, but it turns out that the whole view faces that way. We're a bit blocked by the island. <laughs> and the sunset is over there behind those trees. Oh well. It's okay for me. We'll just sit here, drink some beers, and chill out for a while. It's so nice. All the sounds as well. The birds going to sleep. It's awesome. We've seen some bats too. Yeah. Flying around. It's like 2.30 in the morning and we just woke up because we are moving in the wind. What do you think, Fry? Ooh, it started blowing out of the west, which is the only way we're not protecting this anchorage like straight on the nose. It's more like 20 knots, not too bad, but just got to check things and make sure that we're still situated because now we're on like a lee shore. so. If the anchor drags, it pushes us right into the beach or the rocks or something. Yeah. So we just want to make sure we're okay. And I've got the itches as um. well. 
shit. Yeah. Ugh. Nice. It's like crack, man. Oof. Started like two hours ago, and it's just gotten worse and worse. I just hope it doesn't pick up anymore. We've got our anchor alarm set on here, and according to this, we are dragging a little bit. We are. Yeah. Like how much have we have we moved? Just just now, we've just just moved back a little bit. We were, you see that line back and forth? That's how we've been the past kind of hour. Uh, now it looks like we've slowly started moving back a little bit. Uh, I wanna get some spotlights. Have a look outside. If you can come back here and look. You see how slack our stern line is now? Yeah. We've moved a lot. Yeah. A lot, a lot just in the past three or four minutes. So we're gonna motor, we're gonna drop the stern line and leave it, we'll leave it here since it's almost floats. Okay. And we'll just motor out. Let's get the dinghy down. Do you want me on other things or can I film? No, you're cool. Be careful guys. It's gotten hectic. A few days ago, we set our anchor with Delos' stern towards the beach and our bow pointed out to sea. Sometimes we do this in tight anchorages where there isn't a lot of swinging room. Sometimes we do it just to keep our bow into the swell. But now a low pressure system to the south had swung the breeze around 180 degrees and put us on a lee shore. The holding here is rock with a little bit of sand, so it's not the best. Our anchor wasn't holding and we were dragging. With our bow already into the wind, the plan was to drop the stern hook and motor out into the safety of deep water. What's the plan, Brian? I don't know yet. We'll just get the stern anchor up and then... And his motor out, huh? Yeah. Is it blowing from the south? It's blowing from the west. The only direction we're not protected from to get the bow up and go. Okay. And yeah, go ahead and drop the stern line. Dinghy's down. Yeah. Radar and VHS is on. Oh okay, yeah, thank you. So Lisa is just going to drop the stern line and we're just going to go for it. Brady and Alex. He's picking up the anchor and Brian is driving. And we're getting away from there, huh? Yeah. We're moving away slowly. Yeah, yeah, we're cool. I know the crew has experienced some wild stuff over the years and can even make this situation appear low key. But as a rookie cruiser, this was a pretty startling experience for me. Staying calm and thinking clearly is definitely crucial in situations like this. And although these guys make it look easy, being at the mercy of the winds and tides is not to be underestimated for even a moment. I think we're off the bottom. Okay, I need to know if I'm on a good bearing or not. Going down down here, everything is just flying. We're out of the major area now, bro. If we can just stay on this, I'll find a line and put the dinghy off the back. Okay, I'm slowing down. Pretty hectic. Good morning. Cruising life, huh? Yikes. What do you think about that, Alex? Ooh. It's not a nice way to wake up. Nope. It's scary. Crazy, huh? Yeah. Like in so quick, the condition can just change. Yeah, into a really bad situation. Yeah. <laughs> but luckily, the boys are on it. Whew. So, what do we do now? <laughs> what do we do? Now? That's a very good question. We can either go back into the bay and set anchor the way we were before, because that'll be protected from westerlies. Or we can go to the moorings, because that's also going to be really protected. And both of them are about 30 minutes away. There's nothing quite like waking up in the middle of the night to find your house in danger of being smashed on some rocks. It's certainly nothing I experienced before sailing. It's situations like this that make me very proud of Delos and her crew. We choose to anchor in some very remote, off the beaten path places. Sometimes the holding in the weather is not ideal, but we also try to think through the what if situations beforehand. In this case, we had our anchor alarm set and Delos is ready to head to sea at a moment's notice. So I think we come to the decision that we're gonna go to the moorings um, at Flamingo Bay. It's five to three and I think this is another day of cruising. It's definitely a frightening thought to think that if the guys wouldn't have been so like, you know, <laughs> up and ready and checking everything, we potentially could have like lost our home, you know? 
it's a reminder to always I guess like you always have to be ready Christine you know you always have to be ready to wake up in the middle of the night to check things I guess that's life though huh but it's a bit it's a bit scary for sure it's getting pretty close huh I think he's gonna I think it's that light right there well it's going a lot calmer wake up <laughs> the island protects us already Reed and Alex are going in Maggie to uh to go to the moor and then... Just another fishing boat for our starboard. Yeah, I think so. Or a sailboat actually. It's a bit hard to see. I'm pretty sure that fishing boat in front of us is on it. Yeah. On the red light. Yeah. That boat is actually on the moor end, so that fishing boat. So we're gonna try to anchor inside. Fishing boat. Solid. Okay, snub it. So we have out 50 meters of chain. It's nine meters deep. And we back down how much? 1500 RPM. Which represent about 40 knots, huh? Yeah, 40, 45 knots of wind, something like that. We should be solid. We should be good. Otherwise, we'll just drag out into the bay anyway. <laughs> Let's not hope that happens, huh? Thank you, Brian. Mm, thank you. you did really Everybody did real good. Yeah. But thank you so much for, for doing what you do. Too. Too. I love you. Good job, everybody. Well yeah. done. Never had to do that before, huh, bro? No. First time for everything. But better here than there. Much calmer. A little yeah. lowly, but. It was weird, man. I mean, it started, I was watching it for like two hours, and then right when you got up is when it really started to blow even harder. Yeah, and then we woke me up. But, good thing, yeah, we're only 30 minutes away from an anchorage. Imagine being in like St. Helena or Ascension, that happened in like... <laughs> just have to go out to sea. You just go out to sea and heave too, right? Yeah. But, 30 yeah. minutes away. But good well, job, everyone. Good well job, done. everybody. Well done. Get yeah. some sleep. Yes. And tomorrow's another day. have a <laughs> nice little bun up here. I don't know what's going on. Anyways, we just woke up. It's actually about 10.30, but we're gonna go on a reconnaissance mission to get our anchor back. It's quite gloomy today. We left in a bit of a hurry last night, so... <laughs> a little bit of a hurry. We dropped us, Diana! <laughs> oh, your hair is a bit crazy this morning, too. Is that? Yeah, it feels pretty crazy. Probably just motor and then we'll just go get it in the dinghy. There's no need to pick her, I don't think. Yeah, if you just want to motor back and forth, has a Brian and I can ride in and. Yeah. Come back home safe! Okay. We had 50 meters and it was about 4 meters deep. And we dragged. That's f***ing insane. Right? Yeah, it's weird. That's crazy. Do you think it can be that we had out too much? No. Succeeded? Perfect. Nice. Good job. Brian did it all by himself. Oh, strong little boy. Nice job, Kaza. Awesome. Now we go back to the anchor or anchorage, pick up a mooring and Chillax. Next up on Delos, we celebrate Kaza's birthday. Enjoy the nature of Ila Coves. You landed right Don't on this. Move, Brady. Don't move, dude. I've been trying to oh, hold catch on, I'm gonna zoom in. butterfly for like two weeks. So I'm gonna cry. Oh my god. An attempt to film our new Bias Abir video.
don't want them in a soft bun. What, Kayla? I want my sausage in the bun. Once again, the boat is mine. <laughs> Let's go. What are you doing, Alex? <laughs> You're hanging over the thing in your rain jacket. I did pee really bad. I can't hold it. <laughs> what do you think about having Kirill come on the boat? <laughs> Just kidding, Carol. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> ah, it's <was> funny. <laughs> yeah, of course, man. Alright, so these guys, we're pretty sure, have gotten severely drunk and managed to get the line from the beach protecting floats wrapped up in their prop. And they're slowly drifting this way. But the good news is they haven't stopped the churrasco yet, so they're still cooking meat on the back. That's the priority, and they've got people trying to untie the prop. Still sunbathing. Still sunbathing, that's nice. We'll, awesome. just, we'll just keep an eye on them. And if they drift this way, we'll mag him out of the way. Oh, look at this boat in front of them. They're all to smash into. Oh my god. Oh, shit. Yo, he was not watching that. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. Okay. See you later, guys.